Hey everybody. Here I'm looking at an e-machined T3418 desktop computer. And this computer here, um, I did make a video about it a long time ago. I would say a couple months ago or so. When I had just got it. This computer is in extremely good condition. I mean, it hasn't even been used on it much. What you see is the very small amount of surface dust in this machine from, I believe, when it was brand new. Now, the owner may have um, kept it clean down, not really sure, but um, it looks very clean on the inside. Not to mention, when I got it, the original Windows install was on the, on the hard drive, and it was fairly clean. There wasn't a bunch of junk installed or anything like that. It was real clean. And the common problem with these e-machine computers is, um, well, with the older ones that had the Bestech ATX 250 12E power supply, they had an issue to where the 5 volt standby rail on the power supply would overvolt really high and fry the motherboard. Now, in this computer, this machine has a Bestech ATX 312E power supply. This power supply doesn't have the 5 volt standby rail problem. However, the computers that come with AMD setups with NVIDIA graphics do have an issue. Particularly with this board here, this is a K8MC5IGLF and there are similar models out there of this board installed in other machines computers and um, in EverX machines too. This problem also occurs with MSI manufactured MS7207 motherboards that are commonly found in higher end machines. The board I just showed you was a socket 754 motherboard. This is a socket 939. This is a more premium version that has four memory slots, of course, with the dual channel capability of socket 939. And um, the heatsink was removed off this one so you can see the Norbridge chip. The problem is with this motherboard. The heat sink installed in Norbridge is extremely tiny, so it gets very hot. And with this motherboard, the heat sink is a little bit bigger, but at the same time, they use this really junk, what I like to call bubblegum thermal transfer compound. That doesn't actually do what it says it does. It claims to actually transfer heat, but it only transfers very little. I mean, it's like a big, it's like a um, Resistor. Sometimes I wonder if they actually go buy some double bubble and stick it between the heat sink and the chip because that's exactly what it looks like and it's a pain to get off the heat sink. But what happens is over time the chip keeps getting really hot and it causes it to back off from the motherboard. Not where you can actually see it, but there's little bit of connections under the chip that are soldered to the board and these solder balls can fracture, causing loose connections and not. All that mess causing the board to stop working and in some cases you can reflow these boards to make them start working again sometimes they'll keep working other times they'll work for about a month and then quit and what I'm going to be doing in this video is I'm going to be fixing an issue with the cooling and I recommend that you do this as soon as possible if you get new other boards especially budget in other boards that don't have heat pipes on top of them, just regular heat sinks. And um, if you have let your machine run, especially in this case, if you let the computer run for several years of use and haven't done this, the chip connections on the board have already probably sustained some damage. So you can try this procedure, but I can't guarantee you that your computer will remain, remain reliable. If you do this as quick as you can, the greater chance of reliability your computer will have. So, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is remove the motherboard. Go ahead and disconnect all the connections to the motherboard. I'm going to unscrew the motherboard from the case.
Now it's going to remove the motherboard from the case. And to do this procedure, we can leave the CPU core and everything installed, the CPU and the memory. Because all we're doing is we're going to flip this board over and use a pair of pliers for just my fingers to pop these little rivet things loose so I can get this heat sink off. Okay, now let's go ahead and remove those rivets I was talking about earlier. Some cases you can get them with your fingers, in other cases you have to use a pair of pliers. So we'll see. These here are pretty loose. They're not they're not that tough. What you use it to squeeze these things in and push them through. Now we're gonna put the board back over and man pull this heat sink loose now seeing that it uses this bubble gum stuff it's the thing is like stuck to the chip so I gotta be very careful I try to pull this thing turn it back and forth until it breaks free and just have a look at that it's pink just like I said it looks just like bubble gum doesn't do with the squad at um, transferring heat, but it looks like bubble gum. And what makes things even better, it's a pain to remove. So, I'm going to try to start removing this stuff, which won't be very easy. Need to be sure that the top of the chip die is clean. And that the area around it is clean up so that way we make a good connection. That's a close up of what it looks like. Now, of course, I know digital zoom isn't very exciting, but I um, mean, you can still see things a little better. Just have a look at that. You're even scratching it, it's barely budging. Sometimes you can take a hair dryer at this and make it kind of melt loose. Or in some cases, a ladder be gotta be very careful if you do that because extreme heat can damage the board. This stuff is very sticky. The same goes for the bottom of the heat sink. So basically, the thing you have to do is get this junk off. It may take a little while, so I'm not going to shoot video of me doing that, but the whole thing, the whole idea of this is to try to get this as clean as possible. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect, but the better you get it, the better the new thermal paste will transfer heat from the chip to the heat sink. Okay, it's got done cleaning this stuff up, and of course it ain't perfect, but here's how it looks. On the left is the chip, this is the heat sink. And I recommend that you, even even though I didn't actually use a hair dryer in this video, I recommend that you do because the heat makes this stuff um, more easy to move and everything, so that way it comes off easier. With the heat sink, I actually used hot water to heat the heat sink up and heat this wax up and make it come off. On this, I just really rubbed it really hard with my finger, and eventually the stuff come off where it was decent enough. So now I'm going to go ahead and apply some thermal compound and reinstall the heat sink. Okay, I'll apply some paste to the chipset die. As you can see there. Now I'll go ahead and reattach the heat sink. Like so. Alright, it's attached. It looks loose right now because originally you had this bubblegum stuff holding it on there. Now what's going to happen is this chip will heat up and this paste will set in. This here will tighten up, but it won't be nothing like it was. 
and um, now it will transfer heat a lot better than the bubblegum stuff that was on there. Now on this motherboard here, they do have a chip set heatsink attached to the south bridge, but the south bridge doesn't get anywhere near as hot as the north bridge. Now if it's a new motherboard, yes, definitely take this heatsink off too and redo it too. And in the case with the MSI, MS7207 motherboard that uses thermal paste on the extremely tiny heatsink, I recommend you change out your thermal paste at least, I would say, once a year and try to rig up a little bitty fan to blow across that little bit of heat sinks that way the chip will stay as cool as possible anyways now what you do is just reinstall motherboard and just repeat the um, procedure I done earlier backwards put the machine back together anyways any questions or comments feel free to ask